Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Welcome to this new video in which I'm going to show you the configuration of this 40 gate for my home network this is part of a bigger project that i started a couple weeks ago and i'm sharing everything with you here because here on kb trainings i share with you everything that i know everything that i'm learning and all the small projects that i'm building so here i'm building a home network for this new home and i've created the first video in which i introduced the project and i showed you all the equipment that i'm going to use and then there's another video in which i did the cabling and i installed the patch panel and the rack as well and then there's another third video in which i showed you the installation of the ups so now i'm going to show you how i configure this 40 gate here to match the design that i showed you last time because i had some change in my design first when i showed you this last time i had cable internet so i was using this cable modem here to get access to the internet but it changed since then i have now a fiber gigabit internet i showed you in one of my um, previous videos how this connection was installed and i told you everything about it so now i'm using this isp provided modem here it's now playing the role of modem router and it does a little bit of security but i'm going to reduce it to a simple modem and i'm going to put the 40 gate behind it to be the firewall for more security and advanced features so yeah as i said i have fiber coming of course there is ont somewhere over here it comes to the modem we are going to call the isp at some point i'm not sure if i can change the status myself i can try but uh, if we have an issue i'm going to call the isp because um i don't know if i should um yeah i can try to do it on my own but if it doesn't uh, it doesn't work i'll call them um and then when we get the modem here we connect the modem to the 40 gate on port one and this is where we are going to put our wan connection or what area network connection and the port two is going to be my main port going to the home network it's going to have a vlan number 35 but i'm not i'm not going to tag this port because it goes to the switch so the the port will be part of the vlan 35 so i don't have to tag it in this um, in the 40 gate but on the port 3 I'm going to tag them because I have three VLANs inside and I'm going to explain all the VLANs um, next and then the port 4 is going to go to the lab where I have my data center all my servers uh, for my studies and my practices and everything so um, the different VLANs that I have first the VLAN IoT 1 or the VLAN 15 this is where I'm going to put all the smart devices that do not need access to my internal network like the smart bulbs, smart switches, um, the Nest thermostat or the Nest um, door ring. And then I have the VLAN 20, which is another IoT VLAN, the IoT 2, where I'm going to put all the smart devices that need a little bit of network access to my internal network, like the TV, the fridge, or and the, the console for gaming. And then there is also the VLAN 25 for guests. I put the smiley face here because I want my, uh, my guests to be happy when they're surfing the internet because that's all they're going to have. They will not have access to my internal network. And I have the main VLAN or the VLAN 35, which is the main VLAN where I have all my phones, cameras, and my workstation for work and everything else. Um, next, I have the VLAN 75 going to the lab or the data center where I have my servers and I run a lot of things on it and thousands of virtual machines. I don't know, thousands? That may be a lot. But yeah, I'll show you everything here. Maybe you get to a thousand VMs in there. The APs are going to broadcast SSIDs for every VLAN at every floor of the house. And uh, so I won't have any problem with any connection for all my wireless devices. So that's all for the design. I've had some questions like, hey man, you call it a 40 gate, but we see 40 net on top. 40 net is the company and 40 gate is their line of, uh, of firewalls. So they call them 40 gates, just like they have switches and call them 40 switch and APs or 40 APs. So right now this is my 40 gate i know it's an add which is kind of old because i know that the support or the updates for this um are going to end in 2022 i think something like that so it's pretty old that's why i got it for a good price i'm going to see how it performs if it does well i will keep it for 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 another couple months i don't have a license right now and i'm trying to use it without a license but I'll probably reach out to 40 and see if they can give me a license. We have in front, we have these port interfaces that I talked about. 
we also have two USB uh, interfaces that are, I mean, that are not useful in my case. And we also have the console um, port. And on the back, we just have the power. And I have this already connected to power, so I just have to plug it in and it's going to be up. So we have also some ventilation on the sides. So what we need for this project is, first of all, the console cable. This is a console cable. On one end, you have an RJ45 connector. On the other end, in my case, I have a USB interface already integrated. So I'm going to connect this to the computer and the other end connected to the console port. And then we will need at some point an Ethernet cable or UTP cable that we're going to connect to one of these ports and connect it to our computer to have, to have access to the web GUI of the FortiGate. As I said, we also may need to call the ISP to uh, change the configuration inside the modem, but I will try to do it myself here and see if we have any connectivity. If not, we'll have to call them. All right, so first of all, we make sure that we connected our console cable to the computer so it's connected and then we grab the other end the rj45 end we connect it to the console port here and now before starting the 40 gates i need to go in and um, start my emulator that i have i currently use secure crt you might have party or something else and i start a new session here the session is going to be a serial session the COM port is going to be COM4. If you want to verify what COM port you connected to, you can go under your um, Windows Explorer and do a right click on this PC and click on Manage. So once it comes up, you go under Device Manager and you go under port here you can see the the com number that you're using so we're using com4 right now so we keep it like that and i close this so we leave it at com4 and uh the board rates we are going to use 9600 as recommended and then i don't have to save this and i uh, yeah i click on connect so now we have an interface to the FortiGate. Right now we don't have anything because the FortiGate is still down. So what I do next is grab this power cable and plug it into the FortiGate and it's going to, to boot. You can uh, you can hear a little bit of noise there, maybe not. Uh, you have some output here on the screen. We give it some time. The FortiGate is now uh, booting. All right, so we have the output already and uh, we're going to give it some time to boot and then we'll come back. All right, so this is my serial number of the Ford gate. I don't have to hide it. And uh, if you have a new equipment, if there is no configuration, this uh, serial number will be the host name of your equipment. But for now, you're going to see that I have a different host name, which means that I have um, some configuration in it. All right, so you can see the name here is main ADD that I configured last time when I did it. And now I need I need to log in. I know the username and the password. So let's log in. All right, so we have access to the equipment now. And it's asking us to do a, a, a disk scan. I'm not going to do it because I did it lately. Um, so we have some configuration here, but I'm not, I'm going to delete everything anyway. So, but if we take a look at show system interface, you can see that, um, we have some configuration there. So to do the factory reset, I'm going to do exec factory reset and I click enter to ask me if I want to continue and I say yes. And the system is going to reboot and reset everything to the factory configuration. So from there, we're going to restart everything. So after the reboot, you can see that the host name is the serial number of the 40 gate. And the login will be admin without password. So we just do admin without password and you log into it. So now we are inside the device. So you have two ways of configuring a 40 gate like this. You can do it in the CLI where I am right now. You can do all your configuration here. Sometimes it might be easier if you have all your configurations already set and built. You just grab that and copy here or you can upload a file from your backup or whatever. 
but in this case i think i'm going to spend most of my time in a gui or the graphic user interface maybe i will come back to the to the cli at some point i may create with a gui for a single vlan and then come back for other vlans we'll see all right so first of all let's take a look at what we have inside this equipment show system interface will show us that we do have this IP here on the port one so we can connect the computer to the port one and make sure it's in the same subnet and we'll be able to access the GUI of this 40 gate. So to change my network setting on this computer, I'm going to go under network settings and this is going to disconnect me from the internet, but that's fine. So I go under change adapter options and I bring it here so i need to are you i'm using this one here so i go under properties and um, double click on uh, internet protocol uh, version 4 and i set the ip 192.168.1.100 subnet is the same and the default gateway is uh, here but i don't have to set it I'm just doing it um, just in case and then I validate this and I save this. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is take this cable here and connect it to the port one on the 40 gate. And then I'm going to connect the other end to my network interface card on my computer. I have a message here telling me that I have an issue with my network, which is okay. So now I'm going to connect this um, ethernet cable to my computer. All right, we have the computer connected to the 40 gate. Let's see if we have access to it. Oh, I think I should have access to the internet with my Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, I still have my uh, Wi-Fi network interface card that's activated because I have both of them on this desktop here. So let's see if we can ping. Um, yep, we have uh, internet access, which is good. All right, at some point I'm going to disable this interface so we can make sure that we are connected to the internet with, uh, I mean, through the 40 gate. All right, so I bring my browser here and I go under 192.168.1.99 and yep, I have access to the 40 gates and I log in with admin without password. I click on enter and it's asking me if i have if i want to change the password yeah i can change the admin password so i tap in the new password and uh, yep we also match the password and we click on okay so the new password is in and it's asking me to log in i log in with the admin password again all right, so now we are inside the 40 gate. It's asking us to scan the disk, but it's not important because I powered down the 40 gate without, you know, shutting it down. So it's it's fine. So now I have access to the 40 gate. As you can see, I don't have anything um, as license or anything else. So I can see some sessions that I have on the on the port one. One of the first things that I like to do is go under system and settings and change the the name of the firewall i'm going to call it fg just like 40 gate and this is good for my domain name and uh, yeah so this is a voiceover for my english speaking people out there um so i did the the, the whole thing in french and then i uh, i'm doing the voiceover right now so the https port we're going to leave it um, um do like this with 443 and everything else can stay the same on um, english uh, and everything yep the color i can change it to this blue here which i don't like and uh, let's see if there is any other no this is not good uh yep this one is much better but i forgot to click on apply which is a problem so i'm going to get back to it later on so i can go under my interfaces and we have port one port two port three and port four the port one will be connected to my isp and i'm going to configure it later on because right now we are connected to it and the port two will go to um, i mean is for my main vlan which is the vlan 35 so i'm going to configure it now the the name on it i'm going to say 
uh, main uh, and the role is LAN. The IP on it is going to be manual with the IP of 10.35.0.1 and the subnet mask of uh, 255.255.0.0 and we can have HTTPS access um, SSH as well and ping I don't have a 40 manager or anything else so everything I can stay like that SNMP not needed for now maybe in the future cap up radius nothing like that and then I'm going to activate the DHCP server and uh, I'm going to edit the starting point at 100 let's see yep and uh yeah and uh, everything else can stay the same the default gateway is the same as the interface and the dns will be the same as the system uh yep that's all for now i think and when i have my windows server installed it's going to be our um, dhcp server but for now the 40 gate is um heading out IPs. Network devices, device detection, yes, that's a good option to have. Uh, active scanning, that's good, so we can scan all the connected devices. And uh, admission, security, no, we don't need this. Uh, secondary IP, nothing. And the comment, we can just say, this, um, this is the VLAN 35. Yep, that's it. And we click on, uh, we click on OK. So it's saved for the port two. And then we go under port three. At this level, as I said, where is my screen here? Okay, so at the port three, I'm going to have three VLANs inside of it. So I'm going to create those new VLAN interfaces. And the first one, the name is going to be uh, IUT. Uh, IoT1 VLAN 15 and uh, the alias is going to be IoT1 type it's going to be VLAN and what port I'm going to put in the port 3 and the VLAN ID is going to be 15 the role is LAN of course and the IP on it is 10.15.0.1 with the subnet mask of 255.255.0.0 and we can just activate no we don't need http here we can just ping it and uh, ssh no not needed so we are trying to limit uh, access here for for security so we also enable the dhcp server um, we have yeah it can start from two to uh, to the end and that's fine and uh, everything else looks good uh, device detection yes active scanning yes as well uh, security mode nothing like that comment we can just say this is the oh what is this this is the vlan 15 and then we click on ok all right so when we have here we can uh, see the the new vlan interface that we just created fail to return uh, to retrieve info that's fine we'll, we'll see at this point i don't think i need to configure the physical interface so the physical interface can be not configured or like the the main or the untagged interface so now let's get some shortcuts if i come here and i log in into the equipment uh let's see admin and the password so what i'm trying to do is grab the configuration from the cli and change it for each VLAN and then just uh, just paste it. Uh, yeah, and I, I just realized that the domain name, I mean, the host name didn't change, so that's fine. I'm going to change it later on. All right, so if I do show system interface here, I see that IoT, 50, IoT 1 is there, and if I enter, I can see all the configuration that I have under IoT 15. So I'm going to grab this and copy this and i'm going to take a notepad and paste all of that um, so i can now come and put the beginning of the configuration by typing config system interface 
and here I can you know customize it for the other VLANs so for the IoT 2 I'm gonna do IoT 2 there and uh, VLAN is going to be 20 and the IP will be 10.20 and that is 20 as well and we go at the end and we change it to 20 so this is now customized and uh, yeah, the Alice as well need to be IoT 2 so this is what I need for the IoT 2 and uh, I just realized later on that I forgot to change the SNMP index as well. So you need to make sure that uh, the SNMP index is different from what you have on all the different equipments. I mean, all the different interfaces. And then I'm customizing the guest VLAN 25 as well. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and I'll show you when everything is ready and when I'm pasting this inside the 40 gate. All right, so when everything is ready, I'm going to make sure that it, I copy this and I paste in inside the 48 so when i'm putting that configuration in it's all configured so all the other vlans are going to be configured just fine it's much faster when you use the cli like this well when i do show system interface you can see that i have everything configured now okay um all right so I have the 15, the 20, the 25, the 75 and everything. 35 is not here because there is no tag on, on 35. So it's going to, it's not a trunk actually. All right. So uh, what we have to do now is also replicate the DHCP um, server configuration for everything. So we need to go under interfaces. I mean, in under each interface to make sure that we activate the DHCP server. So I go under guest and I enable DHCP as well. So the range doesn't change. All right, so we click OK to validate that. And then I go under the IoT1 interface and I, OK, it's already activated. So I'm just confirming and then click OK. And IoT2 is next. We activate the DHCP server and click OK and um we need to do that for the lab to uh lab one we activate dhcp and um yeah i'll do the the lab 75 later so we're good with dhcp and uh, all the interfaces so what i'm gonna do now is create um policy objects for the the addresses so i'm going to create a policy object for every subnet so I'm going to click on add new and address. So the first one, I'm going to name it main. It's going to be a subnet and the range is 10.35.0.0. .0 .0. No, that's zero slash 16. And uh, the interface associated is uh, the main interface. Uh, yep sure in address list yet static routing configuration no um comment just um main vlan 35 and then uh, click ok so we just created uh, the address object for the main vlan and i can clone it to duplicate it so i can just change the name and the configuration inside so this one is iot1 and uh, click ok So it's duplicated and then I go inside IoT1 and change the subnet to 15 and the interface to IoT1. Okay. Uh, yeah, just a comment here. I need to make sure this is IoT1 VLAN 15. And I click OK. And then I duplicate that again for IoT2. I uh, click on OK and I go inside to to customize it and change 15 to 20. Okay, and the 20 is there too, IoT2. And the interface is IoT2 and I click on OK. Of course, I do this for 
uh, for guest for lab one and lab 75. So next guest, we click OK. And the subnet needs to be changed to 25. And, and the interface is guest VLAN. And here we have guest VLAN 20. Oh, 25, sorry. And I click on OK. And uh, after that, I create one for for the lab. Lab 75, OK. And uh, go under it to change the IP to 75. And the interface is Lab 75. And uh, the comment we have Lab VLAN 75. And we click on OK. All right. So we also need finally to do for uh, interface Lab 1. Uh, yeah, I should clone it. But so I click on it and uh, clone it and do Lab Lab 1 and click OK and then I double click into it to to modify the IP and uh, the IP is 192, 192.168.0.1 actually this is supposed to be that .254.0 but I'm going to correct it later on so it's linked to lab1 and we comment by saying this is lab vlan number one and click on ok all right so now we have all the elements that we needed to create we have all the policy i mean all the um, address objects so this will help me to create ipv4 policy for uh, allowing or denying um, traffic so what i'm going to do next is go back into this and make sure the host name is changed so I go under settings and I do FG and click on apply. Okay, now it's changed. And if anything, I go back to the CLI, I can see that the host name is now FG. All right. So now I'm going to connect my computer. I'm going to remove my computer from the port one to port two. So I'm also going to make sure that my computer is set for DHCP so that the FortiGate um can give me an ip and then we can uh, do our changes on the port one so i'm disconnecting the port one uh, bringing the cable to port two and then i go under my network configurations and make sure that this is set for dhcp all right okay and i click okay all right yeah, the network has been detected, so I'm changing this to 10.35.0.1. All right, so we have access to the 40 gate, and I'm logging into it now. All right, so I'll do admin and the password. All right, I, I need to change the admin name to something uh, not very known, but it's it's fine for now. So now we have the port one available, so we can uh, do some changes on it. So if I come over here, you can see that we are now on port two. So right now, if I open the CLI and try to ping Google, uh, so it's on um, exec ping. All right, so when I do that, we don't get access to the internet. So I'm going to plug in the cable that's coming from the modem and connect it here. So here I'm going to my mechanical room where i have my setup so this is the modem and i'm going to make sure that the cable to which i'm connected is the only one that's connected um, to this modem here so i'm going to unplug everything else just to make sure that it's the only cable connected here so that i don't have to fight for the ip with any other thing um yep so I'm just make sure it's connected right there to the first port and i also just uh disconnected the wayne cable but this one needs to go back because this is where the internet comes in 
All right. And uh, at some point, I lost my light on the phone. Okay. I I turned it back on. And uh, all right. So the one is connected. And then I have this cable that I'm going to connect to the 40 gate. All right. So this is the cable from the modem. And I'm going to connect it to the port one on the 40 gate. And uh, you can see that the port one is now green on the 40 gate on the GUI. All right, it's now green, so I double click on it. And now the I change the IP to DHCP to see if I get an address. So I click on OK and I go back into it again. And it's trying to get an IP. Okay, I have a private IP from the inside. So this is where I'm supposed to go in the modem and uh, get it to be transparent but unfortunately I was not able to get it to work it was not successful and I tried to call my ISP for help but I couldn't get them online because it was like 11 p.m. my time so um, I couldn't get a public IP on the FortiGate so what I did is that right now the modem is still there and my FortiGate is connected behind the modem with the private IP and uh, I can still surf on it, but I don't have a public IP directly on it. So now I have like double routing on the 40 gates and on the modem. As soon as I can, I'm going to call the ISP for help so I can have a public IP on the 40 gate directly. All right, so we keep this private IP here. And uh, uh, yeah, we are routing on this modem here and we also routing on the 40 gates. So. That's not bad. I mean, it's working for now. Um, so what I'm going to do next is uh, let me make sure that I have different subnets on these different interfaces because I uh, I'm trying to make sure that la uh, Lab One has a different IP. Okay, this is 254. So there's no uh, there's no confusion here. We have zero there and 254 there, so that's fine. All right. So right now my computer that is connected on port two has access to the internet through the Wi-Fi interface. So I'm going to disable the Wi-Fi interface um, just to make sure that we can get to the internet through the 40 gate. So Wi-Fi is disabled. You can see that the pings are now uh, down. Yep, we have pings timing out. So to get access to the internet, what I have to do is create an IPv4 policy to allow traffic from the main VLAN to the internet. So we have this implicit deny as always, uh, which is the last uh, policy. And I'm going to create a new one. I will name it uh, main to internet or main to WAN. And the incoming interface is the main interface. And the outgoing interface is port one. Um, I don't like it like this. Let me put an alias on it so we have one instead of just port one. So I go back to it and I double click on the interface and make sure the alias is set to one. And also the role is one. And uh, yep, everything looks good. So I click on OK. And I go back. Um, yeah, so it's good. So I go back to ip4 policy and create new and the name is main main to when and the in go, um, incoming interface is main and outgoing interface is one source um, is the main ip uh, this is uh, the subnet that is going to uh, send us traffic all right so destination is everything on the internet uh, schedule always so it's always up um, services um, all so everything should be going action enable I mean um, accept and not yes we need to not traffic outside and preserve source now we don't need that um, and all this all of this is not important now because I don't even have a license so um, log a traffic maybe not and the comment, I will just say this is give um, this gives main access to the internet. Okay, and the policy is enabled, and I click OK. And now, if I go back to my computer, let's see when it's activated, we should have access to the internet. Yep, now we can access the internet through the 40 gate. 
Um, the Wi-Fi is is, uh, is disabled, but I can get access to the internet. So if I go back to the dashboard, um, I can see that. Uh, let me add the widget here. So I'm adding a new widget to show me the um, interface bandwidth. I'm looking for it now, and then I found it. It's right there, Guy. Yep, and then I click on interface, and what interface? The main interface. And when I add that, I'm going to see exactly the bandwidth on that main interface going outside to the internet. All right, so it looks all good now. And uh, let's do some speed test and see what we have. Uh, speed test. All right, so let's go and see. Okay, 750. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, we have two devices in line and uh I mean, it's uh, it's fine for now, so I can I can live with it and we have 2 milliseconds of ping time, which is okay. That was the download 783 and the upload 780 something. That's good. All right, so everything looks good here. The all the basic configurations are in. Um I'm going to create more videos. Uh, when I have time to go into more advanced features on the FortiGate. And when I will add the switch to the network, I will also add some IP4 policies and some other features. If you have any questions, check out the FortiGate documentation or you can leave a comment below if you think I can answer the question. All right, thank you for watching this and take care. Bye.